everyone and happy Friday. I am so excited for this, well, webinar, live video, whatever. Um, I am such a nerd and I love budgets and I love helping you guys find your vendors. So here we go. It's going to be a long one. Just, <laughs> just warning you, I have like three pages where I planned it out. And so anyway, it's going to be great. Um, okay, so I'm going to be, hi Mitzi, so good to see you on here. I'm going to be looking at my notes, so if you guys see me like looking away, then I'm just looking at my notes, because this is going to be a long one. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is why are weddings so darn expensive? And I know that a lot of you guys saw my post from yesterday where the Wedding Wire just released the results of how much an average wedding cost in the U.S., and it was $38,700. Why? My question is, and your question, I'm sure, is why? I know that, I think, Catherine, it was you that said, oh, my gosh, it never makes me want to vomit, and, <laughs> like, I totally, totally get it. So let me just kind of give you some insight on why weddings are so expensive, and then we'll jump into finding your vendors and all of that good stuff. So have you guys ever heard of, they call it the wedding tax. And this is basically the notion or the idea of when you go to a vendor, when you go to a venue and you say the term wedding, then they immediately kick the price up just because you said wedding. Well, there are reasons for that and they're very legitimate reasons. So let me kind of explain. So if you're having maybe a birthday party or like just some kind of event or wedding anniversary, it just not, it doesn't even compare to a wedding. There are such high emotions. There are so many expectations from the bride, from the groom, from the bride's family, from the groom's family, from the guests even of what this event is supposed to be. And everyone knows that it's supposed to be perfect. Like, that's just how it is. Weddings are once in a lifetime events that happen and everything should go smoothly and perfectly. It doesn't happen, of course, and it's not necessarily a good thing if you think that, but that's what's expected. That's just what's at stake. And another reason is weddings are at least three times the work than another event. Just think about it. Weddings, when you plan a wedding, it can go, the planning can happen or last for one to two years, if not longer. If you're planning a birthday party or another event, eh, maybe like a month or two max. So there's so much more planning that goes, that, that goes into it. And then there's all of the plans that are changed, like sometimes the colors change, the flower arrangements change, the kind of cake that you want changes. Everything can change, but what other events, it's like, oh yeah, like that's fine, or we'll just have a cake, no big deal, you just want a DJ there for music, right? It's so different, and that is one reason why when you go to a venue or you go to vendors and you say wedding, that's why they charge you more, because there's so much that's involved, it's like there's so much at stake, right? There's so much more time and energy and investment. And uh, for us as wedding professionals and wedding vendors, we have a much bigger commitment to you and your wedding than if it were to, like for a birthday party or other event. And that isn't to say that we're gonna put less effort into it, but it's just saying that it is less work. That's just how it is. And the other thing about the wedding tax is that everything costs money. It just does. Your guests cost money. The more guests you have, the higher your food bill is, the higher your alcohol is, the higher your venue is because you have to get a bigger venue to accommodate for that number of guests. And just think about when it comes to bakers, where multi-tiered cakes and wedding cakes like that are such, like, hard. <laughs> They're so much harder to do than, you know, a one layer sheet cake or a little round cake or anything like that. It's just hard to do. It's hard for bakers and it takes a lot of expertise and experience and all of that. And then for photographers, they not only have 
the six or eight hours that they're actually there for your wedding taking pictures, but they did your engagement photos before. They did your bridal session photos before your wedding. And then they have the actual uh, like number of hours that they're there on your wedding day. But then after the wedding day, it's all of the hours that they spend editing your photos and getting them to you and printing them out on canvases or in photo albums if you ordered that. And so, guys, it's just a lot. And so one thing that I really encourage you to do is to not bash wedding vendors when you ask for a price and they're really expensive. Please don't. You need to find your expectations and you need to know your budget. You need to know what you expect and what's reasonable. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But so just to summarize, weddings are expensive because they deserve to be and so much goes into them and there's a lot of time and money and investment and emotions so just wanted to kind of explain to you why weddings are so expensive so taking that into account hold on let me toggle back oh hi ashley and courtney and shelby and galena i don't i still don't know how to pronounce your name is it Galena Galena Helena help me out here just put like a pronunciation please in the comments um hi Cynthia and hi Ashley so good to see you all um so real quick I just want to know how much before I did the post yesterday before I told you guys in the live video the average cost for a wedding what would you what did you think like if I asked you hey how much do you think a wedding costs in the U.S what would you have put? So I want to see that in the comments because I want to see just how much you think an average U.S. wedding costs. So go ahead and type that into the comments for me because uh, I'd love to know. So going on to the second thing, which is finding your vendors. <laughs> and you guys are probably, some of you are probably pretty overwhelmed with all of the choices and just everything, right? Like when you type into Google or the not, like Dallas Wedding Venue or Dallas Wedding Florist, just a hundred pop up, right? So it's like, oh my gosh, how do I even know which one is best for me? How do I know which ones are good? How do I know which ones are in my budget? So totally get it because it is a lot. It's a lot. That's just how it is. And that's, again, another reason why weddings got so much is because it's a lot. Um, okay. So the first thing is you need to know what to expect and you need to have reasonable expectations. So just what I mentioned before, if you are expecting wedding professional quality, you need to expect a wedding professional price. And a lot of brides that I see, and this is, hold on that. A lot of brides that I see, they will get upset. Like when you ask, hey, how much do you cost? will get really upset because it's like, oh my gosh, why in the world do you cost that much? Like, oh, my grandma could do it like better than you for cheaper, you know, just <laughs> all of that stuff, right? But I love what I do. I love my business and I love my wedding professional friends. And that is fine if you don't want to spend that much. It's totally, totally fine. But if you don't want to spend that much and if you're not willing or able to spend that much then please don't expect that same quality for you to receive that same quality if that makes sense y'all just put like some give me some hearts or some thumbs up if that makes sense to you and i'm not saying that you should pay that much money if you don't have that much money if you don't want to pay that much money then don't just don't because it's just going to lead you to regret and having even a more stressful wedding planning process. So all I'm saying is that your expectations and your budget need to align. What you're wanting and what you want to receive and how much you can contribute financially to that need to be, need to make sense. So for example, if you have $500, let's say, to hire a photographer, then you need to not expect the work that you're going to get from a $2,500 photographer or a $4,500 photographer or a $10,000 photographer. If you go with a $500 photographer, then you need to expect some kinks. You need to expect that 
okay, maybe they've never done a wedding before, and maybe that's why they're $500, or maybe they don't have backup equipment, and then your photos could possibly get lost. Or maybe they just shoot by themselves. It's just one photographer, and they're not able to take as many pictures. So you need to, again, align the cost with your expectations. Um, OK, going on. So know what you can afford and know what to expect. So that leads to knowing your budget. And you need to know how much you have. How much do you have? How much are you comfortable with putting toward your budget and putting toward your wedding? Who is going to help you contribute to that? How much are they going to contribute? So you need to figure that out, and then you need to take that and do it with your vendors. So with the vendors and knowing how much they cost, you need to do your research. You need to go to their websites. You need to ask people like me, like, hey, how much does a typical person like this cost? or go on their website and ask for quotes and ask for prices. And then kind of, you know, just go back to your budget and compare it and see, okay, does this actually match? And you need to make a plan. So many brides that I've seen will just go at it like by the seam of their pants and just, kind of take every purchase and every vendor as they come, and then, well, the second vendor comes and they're already up to their budget. Like, that's just not gonna cut it. So you need to have a plan, and you need to know, okay, what are all the expenses, and how much are we willing to pay for them, or how much are they gonna cost? And that's where the research is gonna come in, too. So knowing exactly, okay, what's the average, what are these prices that I can expect, all of that. And girl, if you don't have enough money, so let's say all of those quotes that you got don't match the budget that you have, don't lose hope. There is so much that you can do. You can you know, find another way to get money or maybe get a side gig or a part-time job, see if other family and friends are willing to contribute, see where you can cut in other areas of the budget. That's why it's called a budget, is because you can splurge on some areas, but then you can cut back on the others. So it just goes back to knowing what you want and knowing what you can afford. Because when you know what you want, when you know what your priorities are, when you know which things are most important to you, then that's where the freedom starts coming in. Because you have this freedom and that you've set your, you've set your budget, you know how much you have, you know how comfortable you are with spending, and then you just have fun, like play around with it, see what you can afford and what you can splurge on. And hey, if you don't have enough, well, then look at those items that you can take away from. So, um, okay. Okay, so for example, like some of you, and I know this to be true just from your comments from the post yesterday, which I really, really appreciate. Because um, I want to know how you guys feel about, you know, the expense of a wedding. Um, so some of you are just going for, like, that simpler, lower budget wedding, which I think is amazing. And, but again, you need to have the expectations of, okay, we're not going to have, like, that Pinterest quality wedding because it's just not going to make sense, right? You have your budget for you, and if your budget doesn't match the budget of other weddings, then yeah, your wedding isn't going to look like that. But that's okay, because your wedding is perfect for you, and you need to figure out what you actually want and what's best for you. Um, okay, and then others of you want, oh, first, before I go into that, um, so if you're having a lower budget wedding, I'm just going to give some advice for you. With a lot of lower budget DIY weddings, there's a lot of family and friends that are involved, which is awesome. I believe that that is one of the most important things about a wedding, having your family and friends there to celebrate with you, right? But if it's going to come down to you ask a family or friend to do something for you, and if something goes wrong, and you might 
really mess up that relationship or that friendship, please don't ask them. Just please don't because your friendship and your relationship with them is way more important than a cake or flowers or anything else about the wedding, right? Besides you getting married. Um, so just tread with caution about who you ask to help. Have a lot of discernment with, okay, who do I trust? Who do I know will get this thing done? Or if you just don't care about if that thing gets done, then great. Like, you can ask anybody. You can ask Joe Blow from the street, right? <laughs> um, but please be careful because if it is going to possibly affect your relationship or your friendship and you're worried about that, just go with someone else, whether it's hire a professional or use another family member that isn't going to be like much of an issue or whatever. So just please be careful with that. So that's like the lower budget, simpler, more DIY weddings. And for others of you, you guys want a nicer wedding and you're having quite a bit of budget, like ten to $20,000. And that's great. And you dream of this like elegant, classy wedding and you just want your guests to be treated well and that's how I was too honestly so my wedding was about fifteen thousand dollars in total and I would not have had that same wedding if I was paying for it my parents were so gracious to pay everything for it but they also wanted like from their generation they just had this notion of a wedding is something you put on for your guests it's something that you do that's really nice for them you have a sit-down meal, you have some nice champagne, all of that. So some of you want that, and some of you have that in your brain, which is awesome. And I hope that you guys are getting from me that the wedding that you want is amazing. And I'm not telling you to have a specific type of wedding. I'm just encouraging you to make sure that your budget matches your expectations. That's all that I want you to understand from this. Um, okay, so depending on whether you want a DIY, you know, lower budget wedding, or if you're wanting a little bit higher, nicer wedding, um, you need to know what is important to you, and you need to be able to pick and choose which things are important, because you probably won't be able to have it all. <laughs> It'd be amazing if you could, but I'd probably go over all of our budgets very, very quickly. So just know what's most important to you. Is it the venue? Is it having that four-course sit-down meal? Is it just having your family and friends there? Is it the DJ and the music? So kind of take a few minutes just to brainstorm and like write it down, just which things are important to you. And then that's going to help you find a lot of clarity with when you start researching these vendors. It's going to give you clarity and affirmation on where you should be looking and what kind of vendors you like. So when it comes to researching your vendors, and you've heard me say this before, I love the rule of three. And the rule of three is basically where you only look at three vendors at a time and no more. And this is to keep you from being super overwhelmed, from taking in so much information that you stress yourself out, just three. Three's a good number. It's good. <laughs> Just three. Um, and so when you go and look on these websites, whether you find them through Google or through The Knot or even through Facebook or Pinterest or wherever, email them, fill out their form, look at their website. Like, how does it make you feel? And what's their communication like? When you fill out a form or message them on Facebook, do they get back to you quickly? Are they kind? Do you like how they communicate with you? And do they actually answer your questions? And really trust your gut. That's something that I don't do as well as I want to, but just trust your gut because if you feel any of that like eh, feeling, you know, just that unsettled, uneasy, that's a red flag. And you need to trust your gut and go far away from that vendor. And go to someone else. There's always someone else. Always. Always. So if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel uneasy, if you feel eh, just move on, okay? Um, and then also with each vendor, look at their reviews and their testimonials. What do people say about them? 
And another thing too, like if you are really considering this vendor in your vendor search, then ask them for referrals that you can contact and say, hey, I'm thinking about using this person as like for my wedding. How are they for you? How was their service? All of that. Because a wedding day is very important and you want, you want to make sure that you have the best people who's going to bring your dream wedding to life. You just do. Um, okay, the contract. When someone sends you a contract that you're really seriously considering, please read every word. And I know the contracts, you don't want to read through them, but you need to, please. Because you need to know, do these vendors have a plan B? What happens if they slip and the cake like goes on the floor and it's no longer edible? And what happens if the photographer's camera breaks? What happens if the wedding planner gets sick and she's not able to make it? So you need to know all of these things. You need to know the fine print because it will give you such a better stress-free wedding engagement and wedding day, okay? And I've heard so many horror stories, and I won't say too many because I don't want you to get scared for your own wedding, but I just want you to know why it's important to see this fine print. So I've heard of and have seen brides, photographers lose their photos, and then they ghost them. Like they, the bride tries to call, they try to email, they text, all of that, and the photographer just disappears and no refunds at all. So the bride and groom just spent like 500 to 1,000 bucks on that photographer and they don't even have their photos. Like how sad is that? And then bakers not showing up and then not getting their refunds and having specific vendors cancel only weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, people. Oh my gosh, that is so stressful for a bride. For y'all, if like just imagine if your venue canceled weeks ahead, I, I'm sure some of you have seen the whole thing with the Noah's event venues with all of them closing, leading brides just left hung out to dry weeks before their wedding. It's terrible. So please read through the contract, trust your gut, read reviews, ask for referrals, all of that. Um, oh, and then the other thing too, and I struggle with this also where please don't feel like there's only one right choice because there's not. There's just not. There's not, it's not like, oh my gosh, if I don't go with this venue, it's not going to be perfect. Just relax. There are so many vendors out there. There are so many wedding venues. There are so many photographers, DJs, like you name it. So just relax and don't feel like you have to find the right one. Just find one that's right or that's good for you. And everything, everything happens for a reason. So just trust that it's all gonna work out, okay? Um, all right, so, so far we've talked about, number one, we've talked about why weddings are so expensive. The second thing, we talked about really how to dig into your vendors and figure out which ones are the best for you and which ones are in your budget, and what to expect just to have your budget match your expectations. So the third thing that I'm gonna talk about is one of the number one ways that you can save money with your wedding planning. And that is honestly to hire a wedding planner. And girl, that is what I'm here for. If you are feeling super overwhelmed about even figuring out your budget or holding yourself to that budget because it is so hard to hold yourself accountable um, and to actually know, okay, how much can you afford and what is a reasonable expectation of what I should expect from my own wedding because we've already talked about how <laughs> and y'all have seen from your comments on the post yesterday that the spectrum is so huge. There are some of you that want a really simple thousand dollar wedding and some of you that want like a thirty thousand dollar wedding and so it just depends like there's no cookie cutter plan to it it just depends on what you want and how much you have and what you're comfortable in spending um, and then if you want someone to help you kind of process through and think through everything and give you alternatives of 
hey, instead of going with this more expensive option, here's what you can do that will save you $500, $1,000, all of that. And so I wanted to tell you a story of a bride and groom that I worked with last year. They got married in December, and their names are Mercedes and Layton, and they hired me for my planning package, which is $2,500. And within one month, I was able to pay for myself because I found them vendors and saved them $2,500 in just their vendors in that month. And so it's pretty cool when you can say that you pay for yourself. Um, sorry, that was my husband. He just got home from work. Um, <laughs> love you, Dave. Um, and so with Mercedes and Layton, I was able to like help them figure out what they actually wanted for their wedding and what they wanted their wedding to look like and which things were most important to them. And gosh, it's so hard. It's just so hard to know every step to take to know how to talk with vendors and how to find those quotes and what do you expect with how much you should pay. Um, and so it's just hard to do it by yourself, especially when you've never planned a wedding before. It just is. And so I totally understand and am totally here for you. And so if you are struggling with making these decisions, that's why I'm here. And to help you talk through it and process through it and figure out where you can splurge and where you need to save. And it's like a puzzle and I'm here to help you fit all the pieces together and make the wedding that you can't wait to see come to life in front of you. You can't wait to see the wedding that you imagine actually happen, right? And honestly, like, <laughs> I'm saying honestly a lot, I don't know why. Uh, truthfully, <laughs> you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You don't have to feel that pressure of, oh my gosh, if the average price is $38,700, then I have to spend that much. Like, I think it, um, I think it was you, Ashley, that said, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to get a second or third job. You don't. Well, you might, but not, don't feel like you have to pay that $38,700 because, ladies, each of you has a specific wedding that is perfect for you and what you're on. It's your wedding, no one else's. And I'm here to help take those dreams and take those desires and take what you're imagining and bring them to life and help you figure out, okay, how much do you have? Let's work with it and let's figure out how we can do this. And let's make sure that your day is as stress-free as possible and that you have the best day of your life. And that's what I'm here for. So. Um, anyway, let's see. Okay, let me look through all the comments. So Ashley, around 15 or 20, okay. Shelby, about 20, yes. Okay, Ashley says, how do you know how accurate the reviews are when you're researching? Like if all the reviews are five stars, how do you know it's true and not just picked over through the company? Such a good comment because yes, that will happen. Hi, Jessica, hi, Megan, good to see y'all. That will happen. And that is one reason why it is so helpful to have a wedding plan who actually knows the industry and who can background check these people. Because it's true. Some people will just write reviews that are fraud or that, you know, they'll have random people write reviews for you. And so it's so much better to have those people who actually know these people um, to make sure that they're the best for you. And the other thing too, Ashley, about that is that you need to meet up in person with them. Meet with them in person, meet all of your vendors that you're seriously considering before you book anyone. You need to meet them in person because that's going to show a lot too. And you're going to get that, like those red flags, you're going to see and feel that gut feeling if it's not right for you. And that's where you also read the contract too. Just make sure they have all their ducks in the row, in a row, and that it's best. So, um, I don't think, hi, Lynn, good to see you. Um, if y'all have any other questions, please let me know. I know that was a lot of information. And the other thing, too, is if you want more help with your budget, um, please reach out to me if you're interested in using me as your wedding planner or your wedding coordinator, but also wanted to remind you guys of the Dallas Wedding Workshop. 
that I'm putting on with my friend Darian, and he's a an award-winning wedding photographer. He moved all the way from Oregon to Portland, or from Portland to Dallas, and I'm really, really excited. And you're gonna get a lot more help and a lot more details about how to actually create your budget and how to stick to it, how to create one you can actually afford. That's gonna be touched on in the workshop as well. So that's gonna be on Sunday, March 8th, from or at one o'clock also here in Dallas. And if you are not from Dallas and you live a really far away, great news because you can still register and save your spot and then you will get the live replay and all of the resources and freebies that you would get if you were actually there in person. And it's only $29 if you register before. If you pay at the door, it's $34. So make sure to sign up and save your spot. I'm going to put in that website for you real quick so y'all can check it out. Workshop.com. Um, but yeah, so those are your, some of your options. If you're really struggling and you don't know about how to do your budget, please reach out to me, look into the Dallas Wedding Workshop, DM me privately, anything like that. So, whew, that was a long one. I was so excited because this is one of my favorite topics. So, <laughs> if y'all have any questions, just let me know. Have an amazing weekend, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.